SMT Nation, we back. Nation, this article from AT&T is really interesting. Well, it's about AT&T. Uh, the folks over at Cord Cutter News dropped it, and it's an interesting read, so I encourage you, use the link in the description to check it out, get all the details, but I'm going to give you guys my commentary on it as we kind of do an overview of the article, and then, of course, I'll give you guys my take uh, and, and how I feel or think about it. All right, so the uh, link will be there, and of course, the links for supporting the channel are also there. Show your appreciation to the SMT. Uh, there's different ways to support us. They're all down in the description. Okay, so the title here, AT&T wants big tech like Google and Netflix to pay for a rural internet rollout. Okay, so we've long had the digital divide, right? The haves and the have not, right? Folks that have fiber access, folks that have high-speed broadband available to their homes, their businesses. It's segmented. Parts of the U.S. have it, parts of the U.S. don't. And I've always voiced my displeasure for companies, you know, not existing in places and creating an underserved segment, right? Places like rural America. And I really want those folks to be involved. I want those folks in the, uh, in the arena when it comes to competing for jobs, competing for job performance, and not being put in a situation where they can't compete as well as the others because of opportunity of connectivity. All right, so here's AT&T kind of trying to flex their muscle on big tech like Google and Netflix and Meta and all these companies, you know, that that utilize connectivity as the bridge of getting people to their applications and their platforms. And I know for a fact I've spoken to people within the industry at Verizon T-Mobile and AT&T about this very issue. The big telcos don't grow like big tech. You know, Meta, Google, you know, these types of companies have absurd growth rates with revenue streams that continue to accelerate, right? We're talking about free cash flow increasing, you know, at, at a very steady pace. That's that's tough in telco. So telco wants to see that change. AT&T is just saying what all of telco has been feeling through 4G LTE and now 5G, right? So broadband companies not being able to grow like tech companies, there's probably some envy. There's probably some jealousy there, right? And they want to see more equality there. And I think when you look at the way that things are structured, so specifically cited within the article, the university, uh, Universal Service Fund, right? Specifically aimed at funding the building and management of networks across the country, right? So low-income households, places that, you know, where the digital divide is more pronounced, right? Phone, internet, mobile internet access, whether it's home broadband, whatever, they need infrastructure. They need investment. And it's expensive when you don't have ROI or a return on the invested capital. And that's why companies tend to stay away from places where the population simply doesn't support the growth. Right? You're not going to dump you know, $100 million into a region and infrastructure as a company if the ROI is going to take 75 years to return. It just doesn't make business sense. So the, the funding mechanism, the structure in the way that the USF works, at and is proposing that needs to change. And it's true. The current system as structured in the USF is outdated. Uh, that structure was established many, many decades ago. And it probably needs to be restructured and reconsidered, right? And the only companies that have benefited from connectivity, but without dealing with, you know, these types of constructs have been the Googles and the Metas and, you know, Uber and all these connected application-based services. So they have a point. I hate to side with big corporations, but they have a point. Things aren't really structured for them to accelerate to the likes of these other big tech companies. I just don't know how much can change, how, you know, in a certain frame of time. I, I don't know what can change there. So I actually see at and side here. I see the big carrier side here. I think what needs to happen is I think these carriers have to get involved. I think they have to become part of big tech, right? Instead of being the telco operator, the network creators, managers, providers, I think they have to get involved. Now, the problem is that is going to be regulations, right? And that's where things get messy. So I don't see a direct solution to the disdain of AT&T. I don't. 
uh, unless they could somehow find a way to bypass regulations for them to get involved with app ownership, app management, and app building and development. That's that's the thing. Does anybody want to see a meta version of Ryzen or AT&T? They would say hell no, right? Too big, too powerful. They'd control the pipes. They'd control you know, the, the internet traffic and all this. I mean, just think about net neutrality and how that goes, right? Very, very tough and precarious situation, but food for thought. Can you guys think of a way that this could actually work to, to help Telco accelerate their, their, <laughs> their cash flows? Oh man, investors are tough and you guys know basically how Telco operates. You got to pay a dividend for not having the accelerated growth rate, right? Verizon's like 7%, so is AT&T. I mean, hell, even T-Mobile now has a dividend, right? Interesting times. What do you guys think about this? I'm really intrigued by this take here from uh, from AT&T and how you guys see it. Do you see it the same way? Are you connected to this or are you disconnected from this? I don't know. Sound off in the comment section below. You all have voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.